tutorial, we're going to see a few more features and how to deal with a couple special case scenarios within dFlickr. In this first example, we can start by discussing flickering in video and film due to electricity. If you are using lights that are 50 Hz or 60 Hz, depending on the country and its power system, and shooting high speed footage, for example, 200 frames per second in Europe and 240 frames per second in the US, you might see a flicker in the image which can result if the shutter is not in sync with the lighting. With dFlicker High Speed, we have a way to remove this flicker. We can add High Speed, and here in the Effect Controls, you see the method. We can choose 6 Alternate Period 2. This will most likely work. That is, if the lighting was 60 Hz and you shot at 240 frames per second, or the lighting was 50 Hz and you shot at 200 frames per second. We can leave the max change percentage on 100 and that should do it. Of course, as we've seen in previous tutorials, because of noise in some cases, it might not be enough. But here's our before and after. Next, we can talk about rolling shutter flutter. Since rolling shutter is the way that most DSLRs are shooting video, and point and shoots in smartphones too, and since the top part of the sensor and the bottom part of the sensor are capturing different moments in time, sometimes we can notice the effect of the rolling shutter flutter. This is especially noticeable with fast moving or vibrating objects. Take a look at this next example where we have the resulting effect from the combination of rolling shutter and the light source. You can clearly see the horizontal roll bars in this video. Not only do we have these horizontal bars, you can see that the frames vary quite a bit. You can see how dark this frame is, and if we advance a few frames, you can see we have a major color shift. This is a very challenging shot. Let's see how dFlicker can handle this problem. First, we add dFlicker high speed. We're going to start by addressing the rolling bars by choosing the method 6 alternate period 2. We learned in the previous example that this addresses a very specific issue, and this rolling shutter effect can also be removed with this alternate method. We can make the max change percentage 100. We can preview that now and see that we still have some bands left, so I can apply the effect a second time. We're going to render that out now. Let's look at that result. Okay, since there are a few bands left still, we can work on it a little more. Let's make this a new project and call it Technique 1 Pre-Render. We can make another project now that we'll call Technique 2. This will be the second pass. We can duplicate this layer a couple times. On the first layer, we can create a mask with the drawing tools to use this layer for the action of the stretcher going into the ambulance. The accumulation method doesn't work well with the action, and that's why we're masking that out. So we can use the accumulation method, or averaging, to get rid of the remaining bars. We need to animate the mask. We'll just animate a few keyframes around the stretcher, around the action of the stretcher going into the ambulance. We'll be inverting this mask. We can also add a feather to the mask and we'll make that about 90. We can make that alpha inverted matte. Now we can add time lapse to this layer and we'll choose a time window of 4 to compare the adjacent frames. And we can make a frame step of 4 and a sampling block size of medium. We can choose method 4, frame average, which is the accumulation method. And it's working on just the area that isn't moving. You can see the averaging isn't working well on these people because they're moving, so we can adjust the mask a little.
Here is the new result. This next example uses a clip shot with the Canon DSLR that was updated with Magic Lantern firmware. The Magic Lantern feature used here is alternating ISO. That mode offers the ability to shoot alternating exposures at each frame. So for this kind of scenario, we can recover a higher dynamic range HDR image sequence. In this particular example, the scene is illuminated by fire. With 8-bit video, it's usually impossible to show the details in the room and not have the fire overexposing at the same time. With D-Flicker high speed, we can merge adjacent frames shot with different exposures by choosing the alternate method. Then we can color correct and have access to the entire dynamic range. This last example is a little stop motion project. The first thing we can do is match color globally since the background color fluctuates throughout. We can set a frame where we like the background level. We add deflicker time lapse and in this case we're using frame 0 for the background reference frame. We could choose any frame we like and just go to the frame and then select press to add. Next we pick RGB histogram 2 as our global color correct mode. We're going to leave the time window on zero for now. Let's see the preview using these settings. Okay, it helps a bit, but the background seems to be vibrating, which is kind of annoying. We could solve this problem like we did in example two, where we masked the action out and applied more passes to the background. But in this case, we will see another method you could try. We can use D-Flicker high speed and make the time window 5, which is a fairly wide time window. We can set the motion analysis to off. So now this will be more like frame averaging. This time we will leave method 1 on. You can see the difference if we were to choose method 4. This would be more like frame blending and based on tracking, so not a good choice for this example. So we'll go back to method 1. Now we can see the result with this comparison. In this very last one, we can see the frames at the end are a problem. We can try to refine that. What we're seeing is a little ghosting of the hammer. We can add D-Flicker high speed and choose method 1 color transfer. We're going to animate the refine threshold percentage at the end to fix the ghosting. We set a couple different keyframes to do this, adjusting the threshold percentage as we go. Sometimes it isn't as simple as pressing a button because not all shots are that simple. But the key here is that you have the tools to tweak as needed. Let's see the new result. You can see that D-Flicker is not only great for getting rid of the obvious flicker, it can also help in many different scenarios.